According to Barron's, now is a good time to buy shares of Disney, although the stock currently trades at a premium price. In fact, it says shares could rise another 50% over the next three years. I'm joined by Tuna Amobi, Senior Equity Analyst at S&P Capital IQ. Tuna, we know Disney has several growth drivers in its back pocket, like the upcoming Star Wars film and Disney Shanghai. But is this a realistic expectation? Where do you see the stock headed? Well, we currently have a buy recommendation uh, with a 12-month target price um, of $122. Um, we think Disney has several you know, catalysts that should propel the stock higher over the next 12 months. And frankly, in all of the years we've covered Disney, um, we think that the content pipeline has never been more robust. And we think these catalysts are pretty much uh, evident across all of the uh, core uh, businesses, from the theme parks to television to, um, to the studio to consumer products and interactive. Every single division should uh, contribute significantly in the next several years. Well, let's talk risks that there are to the stock. The company's core business is tied to consumer discretionary spending, which we saw stall in April, consumer spending. How much of a concern is that? That's a, uh, one of the biggest concerns. I'm glad you brought it up because every time there is uh, there are concerns about a recession, Disney is typically one of the first to, um, to pull back. However, I think uh, all of the macro indicators continue to suggest uh, that that concern is somewhat uh, limited, at least in the near term. Um, so that's why you see the theme parks and, and the uh, advertising businesses that are very cyclical continue to uh, perform very well and, and contribute significantly to the company's uh, bottom line. Now, Disney's ESPN really benefits from the bundling of cable packages. So as we see cable providers begin to unbundle some of their offerings, how could that impact ESPN's revenue and impact Disney's business therefore? If anything, the, um, the idea of unbundling should actually be a major um, you know, uh, benefit to ESPN simply because you know, sports is one of those uh, remaining uh, types of programming that's kind of viewed live and ESPN has been uh, generating solid rating, ratings uh, momentum of late precisely because of the type of uh, viewership that it delivers uh, to, uh, to pay TV providers. And that's why you see the company able to sustain uh, the very high affiliate fee growth that it sustained over the last several years. Uh, ESPN is in pretty much very good shape with all its uh, long-term contracts in place for the next several years. Uh, so we think that's uh, a, a very major catalyst for the company, um, you know, both during and um, outside of, uh, you know, a major uh, macro slowdown ESPN should benefit from these uh, fee increases every year. So any other potential concerns investors should be aware of if they want to buy at this level? Well, clearly the valuation is, uh, is something that comes up quite a bit when we talk to investors. Disney is now trading at a significant premium uh, to its peers and to the 10-year um, you know, historic average, whether you look at the PE or uh, enterprise value to EBITDA. However, we think this valuation premium is warranted uh, for some of the reasons we already, uh, I, I alluded to earlier. Um, also, the idea of um, um, economic slowdown is something to keep an eye on. Obviously, geopolitical anxieties has been something in the past that affected the theme park operations. Um, but this is a very cyclical name. Over the years, they've done a pretty good job to reduce their cyclical exposure, advertising now about 16% of revenues, which is much smaller than peers. So on a number of uh, you know, indicators, we think the company should be relatively insulated from some of these um, uh, macro factors. All right. Thank you so much. Tuna Mobi, Senior Equity Analyst at S&P Capital IQ. Thank you. And I'm Brittany Humar for The Street.